Hey, good Monday morning, everybody. BAM Weather Meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a long-range forecast update, guys. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend and enjoyed the fantastic fall-like weather out there. We had more record-breaking cool temperatures over the weekend, frost across parts of the upper Midwest and the northern plains. And once again this morning, temperatures got down to uh, very chilly levels here. This time a little bit further east into the Great Lakes in the Ohio Valley, we click around here and we can see temperatures even in uh, some parts of Indiana and Ohio, uh, outlying areas down into the upper 30s. There were frost advisors all the way down into Pennsylvania where temperatures dipped down to about 36 degrees. So just again, very rare cool air for this time of the year, but this will be the coolest morning that we have remaining because as we work throughout this week slowly but surely we are going to warm up the pattern if we take a look at our temperature forecast over the next two weeks the trend has uh, generally continued to be more and more towards a mild pattern now i will say data trying to pick up on our front our storm system around the 14th to the 16th that we've been targeting for a while Again, the initial idea there, guys, was that it could be another big cold front. However, because of what's been happening with the Pacific Jet and with some tropical activity in the West Pacific, the jet is funneling a lot of mild Pacific air across North America. And I think that if anything, that cold front will likely dip down kind of along the eastern seaboard and the eastern portion of the country. There could be an upper level low that could bring some precipitation opportunities into the late this weekend and into early next week. But uh, all things considered, I think that a rather consistent warm up is on the way. With that, and with this transition, the central part of the country warms up first, warmer than normal over the next seven days. Eastern U.S., uh, it'll be a slower progression, still averaging out cooler than normal over the next seven days. And again, in terms of moisture, and we'll touch more on this here in a moment, pretty dry, especially across the eastern part of the country. Messy rainfall opportunities for the plains and the Midwest. And I would say more of the same into the week two time frame. We really settle into this milder pattern, really sets up right across the ag belt, uh, across the central part of the country. If there's going to be cold fronts and cooler air, I think it's going to be along the east coast. That could be where we have a little bit more of those ups and downs. Uh, but I think west of that, it's a good bit warmer than normal in the week two time frame and drier than normal as well, continuing for the eastern ag belt. And once again, it's the northern plains and the western plains that have those messy rainfall opportunities. Uh, if you looked at our clarity platform on the maps tab on Friday, we put out an outlook for the potential for 90 degree temperatures returning as we go later in this week and into next week. We take a look at the progression. Here's a look at tomorrow. Still nice, 70s across the Midwest, but slowly beginning to warm things up. You can see those upper 80s returning to parts of the lower Ohio Valley, down through the Tennessee Valley, and that will only grow as we go throughout this period. In fact, uh, latest signals as we work into Thursday are 90s returning into parts of Illinois. And then you can see it continues to just slowly increase and press to the north and to the east as we go throughout the rest of this week and into the weekend. Could be looking at some 90s returning all the way up into central Illinois, southeast Iowa, maybe even into southern and western parts of Indiana. So a much hotter pattern returning. I will say, though, the good news is, especially if you were in the Ohio Valley, it's not going to be nearly as humid as the heat waves that we dealt with throughout the summer. In fact, uh, air continues to run pretty dry as a whole. And you can kind of see here, if we look at our dry window, this has been on the Clarity platform for almost a week now, five or six days, I think. Still looking at a solid five-day stretch the next five days of dry weather for much of the eastern part of the country. From Dallas to Memphis to Atlanta to Charlotte, probably a seven-plus day dry stretch of weather beginning today all the way through the weekend. And again, I would not be shocked if some of these areas continue to stay dry for the next 10 to 15 days or so. For the Ohio Valley, uh, we are again watching that front as we work into the weekend. Uh, if we take a look here at our upper level pattern, you can see maybe a couple of weak waves trying to ride around the ridge of high pressure in the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley into the weekend. This is the next system that we need to keep an eye on. You can see the GFS keeps this upper level low uh, that brings some cooler air to the northeast well to the east. The Europeans quite a bit further to the west. I think the Euro is too far west, so it's too wet in the Midwest and the Ohio Valley, and it's probably too cool as well. So leaning slightly more towards the warmer and the drier solution, but could there be some messy rainfall opportunities associated with some of that weak energy and this upper level low? It's not impossible. If we take a look at our rainfall total over the next seven days, click around, you can see maybe some pesky uh, scattered light activity, maybe locally higher in some spots the further north you go across the upper Midwest 
and the Great Lakes. All things considered, though, guys, next seven days, this is not a super active forecast uh, when all is said and done. Taking a look at just how things average out over the next 14 days, you can see central part of the country at this point averaging out hotter than normal over the next 14 days and drier than normal, well drier than normal. Arkansas, Missouri, southern Indiana, southern Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee. You know, you overlay where the hotter temperatures are going to be combined with the dryness and those drought conditions are going to rapidly expand. You know, I really think, guys, that if you were in, if I had to circle an area, kind of in this region in here, we're going to continue to see drought conditions uh, deteriorate over the next two weeks. I think that a severe drought developing along the Mississippi River is totally on the table, and continuing to expand the abnormally dry and the drought conditions or worsen them over the next two weeks is a major concern for the Ohio Valley and down along the Mississippi River. We've been talking about in these videos the river levels already getting very low at Memphis, that's been an issue over the past several years. I think it could be an issue once again as we go throughout this fall. In terms of what is driving this pattern, so we can kind of look at things ahead, we have had a, a messy tropical forcing setup late August and into September. Uh, if we look here, we actually have kind of two areas of upward motion. One over the maritime, which has been a pretty consistent signal throughout summer. And now a secondary one here, it's actually a little bit stronger across parts of South America and into North America. That's a mix of what we would call MJO phase eight. You can see here, favors the warmth east and MJO phase five. If you blend these together, it looks a lot like what our week two forecast looks like ahead. And generally speaking, this type of a setup looks to kind of linger as we go at least into the week three timeframe. I would say if there's a breakdown and taking a look at the North Pacific for support in that, maybe some kind of a stronger front for the eastern third of the country as we work towards the very end of September. Moderation and a cool down in here. May need to watch for some frost potential. Northeast, maybe Great Lakes. That would be the next frost threat, more widespread risk that I think we would need to keep an eye on. So we're, we're a ways out from this. But I think that overall, out through the 26th, 27th of the month, lingering warmer than normal, maybe a front here to close out the month of September. And, and there's support for that idea from the CFS. In fact, I really like this outlook. The week three timeframe, 22nd to the 28th, overall widespread warmer than normal, especially across the northern and central U.S. We work into this week four timeframe, close September, start October. Core of the above, above normal temperatures shifts back to the west, and you're more seasonable to slightly cooler for the eastern third of the country, where we could have that stronger front. So, that's the general breakdown of the pattern over the next couple of weeks. I do want to touch on, through the end of this month, the tropical activity as well, because that always has a big impact on the overall pattern too. And it's been quiet. You know, if we looked this time last week, there was a very high probability based off of model guidance that Gabrielle was going to form and that we were going to have a hurricane right now, and it completely fizzled. The atmosphere and the setup in the Atlantic this year is just not that favorable, even with I would say slightly more favorable tropical forcing. There's been a lot of wind shear. Uh, there's been a lot of dry air. There's been Saharan dust. It's been too stable to get consistent storm development. If I roll data into the week three time frame and look at the CFS, which we liked as an overall pattern signal, all these oranges that you see here, that is above normal wind shear. It's going to be difficult to get a lot of tropical activity in this area with that type of a look. Now, a little bit weaker, kind of through this area in here and then way out to here. And generally that kind of continues. If we look at some additional tropical forcing signals and some model guidance, I think that based off the upper level pattern, if there's going to be an area with development, it's probably going to be where it's been out to sea, out here, or perhaps we could get a storm that undercuts the high pressure, the ridge to the north and drives towards Mexico or Texas here. That's probably going to be the two spots that have the highest likelihood of development the back half of September. We shifted to a below normal tropical activity outlook for the southeast coast based off of all that wind shear that we showed here. You can see right where it's going through, right in the southeast, it's going to be less likely to see a big storm in this period. Confidence a little bit lower than normal because, as we mentioned, there is favorable tropical forcing signals, but everything else just has not aligned so far this year. Before we go, guys, uh, we talked about 
some winter signals last week, some top Pacific Ocean analogs. You can see that here. Michael talked about that on Friday as well. The tendency to build in a what we call a negative EPO, warmer air and higher pressure over Alaska and into the Arctic, which would favor blasts of cold air and probably a stormy pattern as well. If we look, we actually have some data support for this. Here's a look at the new European seasonal model. Look at the big ridge of high pressure that it's setting up in the North Pacific, a big negative EPO. That would allow for colder shots of air to dive down into the U.S. Now, it's a lot stronger with its southeast ridge, but it also has a bias to do that at this distance. We also have the same type of support from the Canadian. You take a look again, look at the North Pacific, a big ridge of high pressure here. I actually like its 500 millibar pattern a little bit more. It has a weak positive NAO, what we call a positive TNH, colder air over the Hudson Bay. This would allow for cold shots of air to be unleashed at times throughout the winter, but with a little bit of a southeast ridge, probably ups and downs, probably a volatile pattern. I think there can be some big cold shots based off of this setup and probably some big warm-ups too. And as a result, I think it can be a stormy pattern in some big storm systems. Definitely an intriguing look. I think that ultimately this type of a look would end up being a lot colder than what model guidance has right now. Uh, but I do think that there's a volatility aspect to it uh, compared to last year uh, with the southeast ridge tendency in the eastern United States. So that's where we are at right now. Uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on trends for the upcoming winter over the next couple of weeks. Guys, hope you all have a great rest of your day.